morning. I'm here to talk to you today about selling graphic novels. So first of all, I'd like to talk about what is a graphic novel. A lot of people kind of think it's maybe just the same as a comic book. Um, the people who collect comic books might view it as kind of a, just a non-collectible way to enjoy some of the material from the comic books that they collect. Um, but I want to talk about really what it is. So ultimately, a comic, a, a graphic novel is a book, whereas a comic book is categorized as a as a periodical. It's ultimately a magazine um, published, you know, on a monthly or whatever basis. Um, whereas a graphic novel may reprint material that originally appeared in a comic book magazine, or it might be new material. But either way, it's categorized as a book. Um, it actually has an ISBN number, an international standard book number, uh, which you can usually find on the back or on the, on the page with all the uh, publishing information. And the reason this is important when you think about selling your graphic novels is the fact that they're a book opens up um, some opportunities that really aren't there for comic books as far as getting offers for your stuff. Now. When it comes to selling your comic books or graphic novels in general, if you have a comic book collection, it's actually a lot easier to get some offers for your comic book collection than it usually is to get offers for your graphic novels. Um, if you have older comics, Silver Age or Golden Age, it's really easy these days to find a good number of interested buyers, uh, dealers who will make you pretty, pretty good offers and compete against each other. And, um, you can actually get paid pretty pretty well. And if you have really good, really valuable comic books, there's a slew of uh, businesses that will do it on consignment for you. They'll sell everything for you and they'll just take like 10%. So stuff like, uh, sites like Heritage or uh, Comic Link, Comic Connect, like if you have really good stuff, it's incredibly easy to sell your stuff these days for top dollar for comic books. Now, if you have a graphic novel collection, it could be a lot harder to actually get any kind of reasonable offer for your graphic novels. Um, you can go the route of, you know, approaching the same kind of people, professional comic book dealers, and a lot of times they'll buy the graphic novels, um, but they really, in my experience, very few of them have any real understanding of which graphic novels are out of print and more valuable versus which ones are more common. Um, they're just kind of buying them along with a comic book collection and maybe finding out afterwards if any of them are valuable or, or just selling them for a flat price. And it makes sense, kind of. Uh, people who deal in comic books, like the people who really deal in comic books, they're, maybe they're selling on eBay uh, or online, uh, or you know, maybe they're still doing comic book conventions. And if you're, if you're setting up at comic book conventions with you know, valuable old key comic books, it's a lot of work. and effort to bring an inventory of graphic novels as well and the odds of you finding like the right person for that graphic novel are kind of less they're bulky they take up a lot of space they're heavy um, so it kind of makes sense that a lot of the actual comic book dealers haven't really branched into graphic novels all that much and uh, so you have a couple options so I want to talk I'm gonna make a series of videos about graphic novels in general. And there's really two different kind of categories uh, of people who want to sell the graphic novels that I'm gonna make separate videos for. So one, maybe you are a comic book dealer already, or maybe you sell comic books as a hobby, um, you know, in addition to whatever other job you have. And you want to kind of branch into graphic novels, learn more about them, learn how to add those to your inventory, how to make money on those as well. So I would consider you kind of a a professional dealer and like I said maybe maybe you don't do it for a living uh, but either way you're kind of a, a dealer and uh, I will make a series of videos for you as well that are about um, how to really get the most out of the graphic novels when you're selling them for market value when you're trying to get market value and also where to buy them where to how to source them um, how to add them kind of change your you know change your what you sell to not just comic books but graphic novels also uh, but then there's the other category of people 
are kind of the people that are just trying to get rid of the graphic novels they have. So maybe you, if you're in this category, maybe you are a comic book collector and you bought graphic novels to read some of the stuff that maybe is too expensive to buy or maybe you have the comics themselves but they've now become so valuable that it's it makes sense to have like a graphic novel omnibus or something to read the actual material without having to worry about the condition of your comic books so maybe you have an actual comic book collection you're a collector you take good care of it and you've bought graphic novels along the way and maybe you're just trying to thin your what you have or you know, get rid of some of the ones you don't read anymore and buy new ones. Um, or maybe you're selling your entire collection of comic books and graphic novels. Um, you're kind of like, you're in that category of person who just wants to get the, a good, fair offer for what you have. And uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're in that variety, maybe you're the kind of person who's like, kept pristine condition of your graphic novels because that's kind of what you did with comic books. But then there's a whole nother group within the this category of people who bought graphic, who don't really, maybe don't collect comic books anymore. Maybe they used to or they don't anymore. They don't have a comic book collection. They've bought graphic novels solely to enjoy the content. Um, and they, and this person, if it's you, I mean, you, you haven't kept pristine condition care of these things. You've read them, enjoyed them. They've gotten a little bit of handling wear. Maybe they've been sitting in a pile, uh, stacked on a shelf and got a little edge wear. Um, you probably might have bought them kind of out of a clearance bin at a bookstore or, or somewhere else where they weren't in pristine condition already because you don't really care. You just want to read the content, enjoy the great content and the, and the material that's captured. You, know, you don't want to go out and pay $175 for a Watchmen set number one through 12 because you want to read it. Instead, you want to buy the graphic novel for five, ten dollars and uh, enjoy, you know, the best graphic novel ever written by Alan Moore and Watchmen. Uh, enjoy it that way. So this video is really towards uh, this second, second category of people. The people who just want to get a good offer for what they have. They're looking to sell their collection or thin it out or, uh, you know, pass along whatever they've enjoyed reading and they just want to get the best offer. And it can be a little bit of a challenge <clears throat> to get the good offer because it's really discrepant uh, in the various places you can go on the kind of offer you'll get. So I want to talk through about how to sell your collection, sell the things you don't want, get the best offer out there without having to be a professional dealer. And if you are, if you do want to be a professional dealer or you are a professional dealer, you know, check out my other videos about um, taking it to that level as well. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is just a, a couple of the bad options as far as getting good offers for your graphic novels. Um, so the first, you can, you know, you could run a, have a garage sale. And uh, I don't want to knock this too much because it can be a good way to sell stuff, especially since graphic novels in general, you know, when they come out, they might be anywhere from like $14.99 to $100 or more, the cover price. Uh, but the sad truth is that once it's kind of like sold and used and you know a little time goes by, they maybe you have something that's out of print and has maintained its value towards to, compared to cover price or become even more valuable. It's possible. There's stuff out there for sure. Uh, but the vast majority of graphic novels, uh, once they're kind of past that initial you know publication date and they're used, uh, they depreciate and are really not worth much, much at all. So there's many, many graphic novels. Even if the cover price was, you know, 40 bucks or anywhere from 15 to 40 dollars, that are just worth a dollar or two now. Uh, you know, anywhere from one to three dollars. So this is the kind of stuff that actually can be really good at a garage sale um, because there's very little work you have to put into it. You just have a box of graphic novels. You can say. $1 a piece, $2 a piece, $3 a piece, whatever you want. Uh, you probably might well be able to get someone to come by who wants to enjoy them as well and read the material, or maybe they want they have uh, some kind of uh, plan to become a dealer of their own and they might be willing to pay you know, anywhere from that $1 to $3. And a lot of graphic novels are good to sell this way. You don't, you don't have to bother shipping them or doing anything else. Uh, you just get your money and that's it. Little work. But if you actually have something that's worth more, even if it's worth like, you know, maybe 10 or $12, or if you have something that's actually out of print and really valuable, it might be worth 50, $60. Uh, 
you're not going to be able to get those kinds of prices at a garage sale. The odds of like the, the one collector coming by who really knows what the value truly is and is happy to get it for 12 bucks when it's a $25 graphic novel, you know, that's pretty slim at your garage sale. So uh, I wouldn't recommend a garage sale for um, selling anything that has any true value. Now, another option is a comic book store. You'd think that this would be, you'd think this would be the, the best option, right? It's a comic book store. They sell graphic novels, they sell comic books. They're gonna be, they're, they have the market to be able to sell it for more than, you know, people online probably, and they, they'd be the ones to actually pay the best for it. And uh, it sounds reasonable. It sounds like that should be the case, but in my, in my experience, it has not been the case. Uh, I have yet to find comic book store in all my travels that will pay much one for comic books but especially for graphic novels and honestly there's a lot of there's a lot of comic book stores these days that don't even sell back issues uh, they've kind of taken on the model of just selling the brand new stuff that's coming out and they'll have a, a they'll have like a inventory of graphic novels it's all stuff that's in print and uh, easily you know the most current stuff in print and they just won't even buy back issues from anyone. Some people can come in with a great collection and they just don't buy it. They won't buy anything. They don't invest in back issues or back editions of graphic novels. So maybe near you, maybe where you are, you actually have a, a comic book store that will buy and sell used graphic novels and then maybe they'll pay a decent amount. You're probably going to get similar price to what you'd get at a garage sale anyhow, a dollar to three dollars maximum. Um, unless they really know, you know, unless you really have something good. And if you do have something good and you're getting a 10 or a $15 offer for like an omnibus from a comic book store, it's probably something worth uh, a good bit more that you'd get a better offer from some of these other sources that I'm talking about anyhow. And then finally, um, uh, the last option is just kind of like a general used bookstore. So in the area I live, um, we have a chain called Half Price Books, and uh, they'll basically buy anything printed, uh, book, CD, DVD, whatever, graphic novel, comic books. They'll buy it all, and uh, they'll definitely make an offer, but their offer is going to be, you know, worse than you'd get at a garage sale for sure. You're going to be getting a quarter for some stuff, 50 cents, maybe as much as a dollar. And the thing about probably a, a comic book store and like a used bookstore like that is that they're not going to be able to distinguish between a common graphic novel and something that has true value, like an out of print edition that's worth a lot more. So you'd be getting the same dollar offer, whether it's a common graphic novel and you know that dollar might be an okay offer, or if it's a hundred dollar graphic novel and you should really be getting an offer of 30 or 40 bucks at minimum. Um, so those are what I would call bad options for trying to sell your graphic novels. So, uh, let's talk about some of what I consider the better options now. Uh, so first, uh, like a dealer, you have eBay and Amazon you could sell on. Again, these are just graphic novels or books, so quite easy to put them on Amazon, put them on easy eBay. But uh, there are definitely some pluses and minuses to trying to go this route. I mean, if you, if you have ambitions of being a professional dealer of these kinds of things, then uh, these are the way, you know, these are the markets to use for sure. Um, but uh, it, de it definitely is work and you gotta kind of be invested in it. So if you talk about eBay, um, you know, you can get pretty good prices on eBay, definitely more than these other locations. And it's pretty easy to post. You gotta take a picture, uh, take a couple pictures, and do some research on the pricing. And they do have an app that makes it pretty easy. So it's not too hard to get it out there. And then when you talk about the minuses, there's fees. You know, eBay charges anywhere from 10 to 15%. Uh, you're gonna lose that to fees. There's a lot of competition on eBay. Um, and for, for graphic novels in particular. So a graphic novel is usually not like, it's not like having a really old key comic book where it might only be you or a few other sellers that actually have a copy for sale at any given time. If you have a good you know, graphic novel that's like, maybe it's a, it's a rare out of print graphic novel. It's worth 40 or $50. It's still not that old. 
compared to like an old comic book. So even if it's rare and valuable, it's still gonna, there's still gonna be like 15, 16 other people selling the same thing. And you're gonna be competing against them for price uh, to try to get that. And then eBay takes a lot of time. Um, it is a lot of work. You put it out there, graphic novel, especially when you get into like the really valuable ones, they don't sell immediately. You know, you're gonna have to wait a little while. You're probably gonna have to have a make an offer button. So you're not gonna get the actual price you posted it for. Um, it takes a little time for sure. And then of course, you know, it's an online customer. So you're dealing with possible returns and complaints and negative feedback. You wanna make sure to, you know, take pictures that really clearly show the condition and describe things well, because uh, you'll be into that whole realm where you're dealing with customer service ultimately. So eBay is a pretty good option. Uh, it can be a lot of work though for someone who's just trying to get rid of their stuff, and, you know, kind of liquidate their collection for a fair price. Uh, so then there's Amazon. And Amazon is uh, kind of even, it's even easier than eBay to, to post it because they have, you know, they have all the information about all the items already. You don't have to take the picture. You find the details page. So you're just posting it with a brief description of the condition and the price. Um, and Amazon's good in that you can usually get, as far as getting the top dollar price, sale price, that's really where you usually get it um, for these kinds of things. But they also have, their fees are way more than eBay. Even. They take 20 to 30% of the item, depending on kind of how, how expensive it is when you sell it, since they, they charge a flat fee and then also a percentage on top of that. So if you sell something for 10 bucks, they're taking, you know, 30 to 30% 30 for sure. Uh, if you sell it for more expensive, then maybe it's down to 20%. And then they have competition too. In fact, competition's worse on Amazon because <clears throat> unlike eBay where like everyone's post is kind of separate, on Amazon, you're all on the same item page. So your your price and condition are just stack ranked right there with every other seller of the item. There might be 20 sellers and they are aggressively repricing their stuff to be the, the cheapest. So if you, let's say you have a $50 graphic novel and you put it out there, for 50 bucks and it's the cheapest price an hour later one of these other guys is going to be 49.99 and then another one's going to be 49.98 48 49 80, 97 they're just going to keep beating each other all day long and you have to kind of go in and aggressively manage your pricing continually to try to remain competitive uh, and amazon has the same other problems as ebay it takes a lot of time stuff does not sell immediately that's you know definitely the case so you got to wait around and uh, you know know that it's going to take might take six months for something to sell if it's kind of a, a more expensive graphic novel it'll take a while um, and then of course you're in the same customer service boat where you're, you're dealing with returns and complaints and issuing refunds and maybe lost shipments sometimes uh, so that can all be a lot of work now one of the other things with Amazon is they also gate some products and this usually applies to more like more like games and CDs and DVDs and not books usually but I have found that some graphic novels are gated and what what gating means is they basically put restrictions on who can post it for sale so you might look on Amazon and you're like oh wow I've got a hundred dollar graphic novel I'm gonna go and put it on and you go to post it and when you click sell one you get an error message that says you are not authorized to sell this item you, and maybe sometimes it says we're not accepting applications and sometimes it says you know you need to apply for approval and applying for approval you might as well assume you're not going to get it because they want you to supply receipts on where you're getting it from and buying it directly from manufacturers and you're basically asking like for an exception permission to be able to sell it every time and you could still sell this item on eBay, you're just not gonna be able to put it on Amazon. Uh, and I found for most graphic novels, you're okay because books in general aren't gated that much, but I have found that a lot of the DC titles are gated for conditions other than new. So if you if you have one that you bought, brand new shrink wrapped and you never used it, the corners aren't dented and it's still actually new, you'll probably be able to post it for a DC title. Um, but a lot of the DC titles, if it's, you know, if it has normal, a little bit of shelf wear and you wanted to put it as like new or, or a little bit of reading handling wear and you wanted to put it as very good, uh, you're gonna be restricted and not allowed to post it. So Amazon, eBay, uh, you get a good price, but it's definitely work. It's kind of bordering 
it's much more suited for someone who's kind of that professional seller that I'll make other videos for. And if you're just kind of like trying to get the best price you can for your stuff that you want to sell, uh, you're kind of bordering on doing the work of a dealer and not really, uh, you're no longer just trying to like liquidate your stuff. So then there's a few other online options. There's like, uh, there's forums and posts, post places like the CGC forum. So CGC is the company that is a company that does the grading, professional grading of comic books, and they actually have a website. You can find it on Google. Just to search by CGC forum, uh, and it's basically a posting site where people can post stuff for sale and buy stuff from each other. Where the users, CGC users, can basically buy and sell between each other. It also has a lot of like great reading material. There's lots of post forums that are just about like comic history or the next movie coming up and speculation on what to buy uh, so lots of great reading there if you've never seen it you should check it out but you can buy and sell your graphic novels on there as well um, and the nice thing about that is there's no fees uh, you don't charge any fee but you definitely don't get the same amount like if you uh, the people on there are gonna be looking to be buying stuff at kind of a discount much better than that a garage sale or, or you're just selling it locally to like a comic book store or used bookstore but Still not kind of top dollar. I actually buy a lot of stuff there myself um, because you get some pretty good deals. And then there's other things like that. There's like Facebook and Facebook's good. I know that they offer kind of a, usually offer like a local community selling board where uh, maybe you can get a, more than you would at a garage sale and all that, uh, but, and, and avoid having to ship stuff. But like the posting forms, one of the big things there is you don't really know there's no good feedback system where you know how legitimate a seller is or how legitimate a buyer is. So you're kind of taking a little bit of a risk uh, selling and buying and selling there. Uh, again, Facebook, if it's local, at least you can just get the cash in your hand before they take it. But uh, Facebook also offers tons of forums for just buying and selling in general, comic books or graphic novels. So those are all, uh, those are all options. Um, and you do kind of still... Even with those, you're kind of in the realm of customer service. Like you might well have people want to return something who feel you didn't didn't categorize it or, great, or, or describe condition well enough. They might have complaints. You got to deal with all that as well. Okay, um, so now let's talk about some of uh, what I call the the instant offers, the good ones. If you're someone who's just trying to you know get rid of some of the stuff in your collection or liquidate your collection or maybe you just buy graphic novels to read and you need to you want to recoup some money these are all options to get an instant actual offer price um, a sale price I'm gonna discuss three options three of the kind of the best ones I know of first is a company called my comic shop so you can find them at mycomicshop.com and uh, they have a great online system uh, that'll just make an offer you know, it'll, it'll tell you if they're buying something, any individual comic book or graphic novel, and how much they're willing, willing to pay. Uh, then I'm going to talk about a, a website called bookscouter.com. Uh, they, they're, they don't actually buy stuff themselves. They're an aggregator. So you enter the ISBN for any book, whether it's a graphic novel or any other book, and they'll show you, they'll, they'll get the offers of 30 different online used book buyers and they'll stack rank them by you know how much they're offering so you basically see a list starting with the most valuable uh, of how much the best offer you can get for that particular book and again this is where you kind of this is where a graphic novel actually being a book comes into play because you can utilize their system whereas you couldn't do that with a comic book my comic shop will make offers on individual comic books as well but book scouter is just books, so this would just apply to the graphic novels. And then finally, uh, my site, uh, the company I work for, called Comic Blessing, and you can access our site at sell.comicblessing.com. And uh, the site operates; um, the live offer portion of it operates pretty much like Book Scouter. You enter the ISBN of the graphic novel, and our site returns an actual offer amount that we're willing to pay for. So, uh, these are the three options that we'll cover, um, and they all have some pluses and minuses, and uh, although I, I do work for Comic Blessing, I'm here to show you kind of 
how to get the most for your stuff because it, it could be for any individual book, it could really be any of those three that you get the best offer. It might be us, we might make the best offer and I think we actually do on a lot of items and especially the more out of print, rare, uh, valuable items. Uh, but, uh, you know, in certain cases, either for, via Book Scouter, one of the vendors off there, or my comic shop, you might get a better offer there. So I'm going to show you all three. So some of the pluses about my comic shop first is uh, they, they make uh, pretty good offers overall. And the nice thing about graphic novels is uh, they'll, they'll give you an offer on anything they buy. They'll give you an offer in cash or an offer in trade credit. So if you actually are still collecting comic books or graphic novels, maybe you want to go with their, their cr credit offer, their trade credit offer, which can be more maybe than, uh, it's definitely going to be, in the case of graphic novels, that's sometimes as much as, twice as much as they'll offer in cash, or it may be more than we're offering, or it may be more than you get on Book Scouter. And if you still are collecting, uh, they have, you know, the best inventory of anyone on the internet, I would say, other than maybe, you know, eBay as an aggregate of all sellers. Um, but they have a, they, they're a great company. I got nothing but good things to say about them. They grade really strictly. So if you're buying from them, uh, you don't have to worry about the condition. They'll, you'll be happy with what you get. And uh, they just have great customer service. They ship stuff really quickly. Um, really good company. So if you are still collecting, maybe you want to go with the trade credit from them. You can build it up. You know, you can trade off your modern comics and your graphic novels trade them in there and build up trade credit until you have a couple hundred dollars and maybe you get a cool Silver Age book or a Golden Age book, you know? I, I've, there's nothing better than the feeling I've gotten of uh, getting like a nice early action comics for like a $400, $500 action comics that I know I traded modern bulk comics for. And that's just a really good feeling. So uh, they make pretty good offers and they've got a pretty, they've got a great system. So you can like locate the items pretty easily on their website find out if they're buying it, what they're going to pay. Um, they guide you through the whole process. You ship it to them and they uh, inspect it. They come back with, you know, pay you out. Um, it can take a little bit of time, like their whole process. They're just, they're just really doing well and growing. So a lot of people are selling them stuff. So uh, their process can be a little slow. If you send, if you send them stuff, it might be couple weeks before they finally check it in and, and get your payment but still you don't have to worry about it it'll happen if you're in a rush they might not be the best place to go but uh, the other great thing about them is like I said they don't they don't buy just graphic novels they actually buy comic books too so you can go through your whole collection graphic novels and comic books and see what they're offering for each individual item and take whichever offers you want and just uh, not take the ones you don't want um, so one thing to note as a minus, when you're looking at their site, they are really strict graders. And they're going to grade a graphic novel just like they would a comic book. So a lot of people don't really view it, graphic novels, in the same way. So like you might buy a graphic novel and read it. There's a little bit of handling where, um, you know, if you're looking at Book Scouter or even our site, Comic Blessing, you know, we're going to give you the same offer price for a book, for a graphic novel, whether it's pristine or whether it has a little bit of handling wear, that's fine, you know, because usually they're, they're often not sold as a collectible. There are people who buy graphic novels as a collectible and maybe they want a mint copy, um, but a lot of people just want to read them. So my comic shop though, they're going to grade it. So you, if it has, if it's not, if you didn't buy off the stand and like immediately put it in a bag and board, I would ignore the prices they're offering for very fine or near mint pretty much anything, even in really nice shape, they call a fine. Uh, and then again, if it has a little bit of a corner crease or something, they're gonna downgrade it to a VG. So don't get super excited by seeing the offer prices they have in there for near mint, because they're not gonna grade it that way when they get it, and uh, you'll be disappointed. It's better to assume they're gonna go with fine, and then occasionally you get uh, the bonus of them great upgrading something to a VF and you get more money for it. And they'll, they'll grade it however they grade it when they get it from you, and they'll adjust the offer prices. So like if you put it in their system as a fine and they're offering five bucks, you don't have to worry. If they do get it and they grade it as a VF, the offer price will move up to eight, the payout will move up to eight, nine bucks, whatever it is. So um, it almost doesn't matter. You almost don't even have to bother grading it yourself. It's just kind of for your own 
uh, for your own when they do sell it, send you the money. That way you don't you don't or you're not disappointed. So I, I kind of overgrade my stuff when I send it to them, just so I'm always happy with the, the final payout or the final trade credit. Um, the other downside for them is they're you know they're not buying everything, and you can see item by item on their site. They'll give a little flag that says not currently buying, and it might have an estimate of how long before they'll need a copy. Uh, the other downside for them is that you actually pay for the shipping. So they'll give you, they give a little bit of a reimbursement on the shipping cost, but uh, it's not going to cover the full shipment, especially for like heavier graphic novels. Um, you'll get a little bit of money back for the shipping, but ultimately you're going to pay the shipping. All right. So that's my comic shop. And again, I'll, I'll go through some examples of them as well as the other sites after this so you can see. But uh, the next thing, next one to cover is Book Scouter. And again, Book Scouter is not a site, they're not, the site itself is not buying anything. All they're doing is showing you a list of 30, 40, 50 vendors, 50 online different, different sites, and their offer for the book. And they stack rank it so you can kind of see who's offering the most. Um, and one plus is that, uh, you know, you kind of, you get to see 40 or 50 pe different people at a time. And the thing to remember about Book Scouter is it's showing you the offers from used book buyers so these are not people in the comic book industry these are people who are buying just books and the fact that a graphic novel is just a book makes it kind of fall into their realm but they don't know anything about comic books they don't know anything about you know the comic book industry collectibles they're just buying it as a used book it's a good thing when it comes to condition because they don't mind a little bit of wear or tear you know as long as it's not too bad they don't want they don't want stuff with library markings all over it or if pages are torn out or big tears tape um, but you know general handling wear, handling where they're fine with that it's not going to affect the offer in general and uh, the other good thing about book scouter is that uh, no matter which one of these sites you end up selling your stuff to uh, they're going to print you know they're going to give you a free shipping label and you can just download it slap it on the box drop it off at whatever carrier they assign ups fedex and uh, you don't pay for that at all. Now the downside is uh, they really don't have any comic knowledge. That's one downside. So they're not they're not giving you any. They're just going off their systems information on like what what they think they can resell a used book for. Um, and there are seller minimums for each individual site. So let's say you put in one book and you get a stack rank, and there's one vendor who's paying five bucks for it, and the rest are paying you know other ones paying four, three, two, one, one. Um, and then a whole bunch of not paying, not buying it at all. So you, you say, okay, great, I'll, I want $5 from this site. Then you put in your next graphic novel and you get a different list of buyers and one of them's offering $5 for that, but it's a different thing. You're like, oh great, I'm gonna sell this one for five. <coughs> you go through a stack of graphic novels and you'll end up with, you know, 10 graphic novels you wanna sell, each for the great high price of $5 or whatever it came out to be, but it's to 10 different people. And each one of those sites has a minimum that might say, <coughs> to get the free shipping label, you need to sell us at least $20 worth of stuff. So now suddenly you're, you're in a situation where you're like, well, I don't have $20 worth of stuff on any of these individual sites. And each one is buying, each one made the best offer for something for five. So I can either take less of an offer from the site I want to sell to because they offered less on some of the other items just to get over that 20, or, I can, or I'm gonna have to wait try more books until I can get over the $20 for each one. Um, it can take a little bit of a management of all that stuff and, and it's kind of a pain and I've sold, I've taken less offers just to try to get the minimum on one site and get it done. And then that kind of just leaves a sour taste in my mouth because I'm like, I know someone else is paying five bucks for this, but uh, I couldn't get it to them because I couldn't get enough stuff that they were buying at all. So that can be a downside. And uh, again, they, they like, uh, like my comic shop, there's a lot of stuff when you get in graphic novels that they might not, no one, none of these 50 vendors is buying it at all because in their mind, they can't resell it for more than five, six, eight, ten dollars whatever their system says. So they're not going to buy it at all. Whereas um, for us, Comic Blessing, we're buying almost every, almost every graphic novel there is. There may be a small handful that uh, we're not currently buying only because we just got all, 10, 20, 30 copies of it. But for the most part, you'll get an offer on everything. 
And then uh, the other downside about Book Scouter is, you know, you, you're dealing with 50, potentially 50 different online book buyers. And you don't really know, it's not an easy thing to find out like which one of them are legitimate and good and how, what's their processing time. So the Book Scouter system does kind of have a feedback rating system where other people who used it can pipe in and say, you know, these guys downgraded my offer because of this, or they took a long time to pay me, or I had to email them a bunch of times, or there was some kind of problem. You can find out some some feedback on these on these buyers, but uh, you know it's kind of a closed loop. You don't have a good way to get any feedback on a lot of them, and uh, you don't know. I mean, they all have professional websites, so I think you'll get paid, but uh, you never know what kind of trouble you can experience or delays or how long it's going to take to process it or how legitimate each seller is. But uh, that's Book Scouter. Okay, so now uh, the final one I want to cover is our site, Comic Blessing. And again, you get there by going to sell.comicblessing.com. Um, and it's like Book Scouter. You enter the ISBN number of the book, and uh, it gives you an instant offer amount. So the pluses for us are that, uh, you know, we try to make the best offer of all pretty much on everything. There are certain circumstances where we're not, and I'll show you some of those, uh, but we're trying to make a good, fair, reasonable, competitive offer on everything, and especially for the more valuable, rare, out-of-print stuff, uh, our offers are usually pretty good. Um, the ease of selling is is uh, really good. The site's easy to use. You center the ISBN number, get your offer, print down a free label, um, and then we have fast processing times. So usually we're, we're uh, issuing payment. If you selected that you wanted to get your payment via PayPal, uh, then you're usually getting paid maybe two days after we receive the box. Um, or we're sending out a physical check. You can get either one. Um, now, we, we the big plus for us is that we buy pretty much all graphic novels. So you should get an offer on pretty much any graphic novel you enter. Um, again, there might be the one rare time where... <clears throat> for some reason we're not buying a particular thing but you probably won't ever see that if you try our site um, and yeah sure a lot of them a lot of graphic novels aren't worth much you might not get an offer at all from book scouter or from my comic shop um, and maybe the offer from us might only be 50 cents but you will get at least an offer and then we buy like book scouter we buy a lot of other stuff too uh, and we definitely buy like sci-fi and fantasy related stuff so all doctor who books all star wars all star trek books um a lot of stuff like that uh you'll get an offer on our site you probably won't get an offer at all uh from my comic shop it may not be on their site at all they may not be buying it or book scouter all 50 vendors will probably say not currently buying and then we buy other books just like book scouter you know you can try entering your textbooks your recent edition textbooks and other reference books uh and see what you get you know i can't a lot of that we probably won't be buying but there you never know until you try now we do also buy uh comic books and comic collections entire collections um, you can't get the instant offer for those uh, only the actual books with the ISBN number the graphic novels uh, but you can submit you can click on that sell comics link on our site or contact us and uh, kind of give us a brief description of your collection and uh, <clears throat> You know, a general idea of where you're located in the U.S. and uh, we, you know, if it's something that makes sense, we might buy that as well. And uh, we do print that free shipping label, just like Book Scouter. So those are the pluses for us. So next, I wanted to uh, just run you through some comparisons of uh, the three sites. So first, I just want to talk about graphic novels in general kind of what you need to know to be able to enter these. So they're just books, ultimately. Uh, they're reprints of other things, usually. Sometimes it's not a reprint, sometimes it is. Um, but as far as the publication world is considered, these are books versus a comic book, which is a, a magazine, really. Uh, so books have ISBN numbers. Uh, each one has an ISBN number assigned by the government. Um, and uh, that's what you're gonna need to be able to get your offers from these various places, at least from uh, Book Scouter and from Comic Lesson. So usually the ISBN number is uh, the number actually under the barcode here. That's the ISBN number there. It'll also usually be printed as well. Um, 
along the edge. Um, and if you have to, if it's not in either of those, those two places, uh, it will be, it'll appear also on the, the, the page with the publication information. It will appear there. And this is where you can also find the printing, like this is a fourth print, and that'll come into play when you're talking about my comic shop as well. Now, books that were sold in bookstores have the barcode actually, the number of the barcode is the ISBN number. Now there are with graphic novels, if they were made directly, what they call the direct edition, to be sold in the comic book store, uh, you can see the, bar, the number that the barcode has is not the actual ISBN. So for those, they have the, the, the direct edition will usually have a different number. You actually do need the ISBN number, which you'll get from one of those other two places. But anyhow, let's let's take a look at these. So first, we'll take like we'll look at this many armors of Iron Man. Okay. So the first thing we can do is uh, try my comic shop. So if you go to mycomicshop.com and uh, you can go ahead and enter the name of the graphic novel. Uh, well, actually, you want to click on this sell my comics first and then click the record items link and then go ahead and enter the name of the graphic novel. So we're going to go ahead and put in you know, many armors of Iron Man, trade paperback, and click search and you can see they come up with a couple different editions so we'll click in there uh, they show you the picture this is this one's not the item we have so if we try the other one uh, looks the same so does it look the same yeah it's the same cover as the graphic novel we have so this is definitely the right one so we can see that uh, they are not currently buying the item uh, they give you a little message that says that with an estimate of time. Um, so they're not currently buying this at all. So, uh, next we can try Bookscouter. So if you go to bookscouter.com and you go ahead and get that ISBN number from uh, the back of the book under the barcode or the publishing page and you can enter that there. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that so I have it for the next site as well. And hit search. And looks like I probably mistyped it. So, uh, yes, it should be an 8 rather than that 9. So we just fix that and hit search. And you can see this is the same book. It's got the same cover. And we can scroll down and see this list of vendors. And as we scroll down, we're seeing that no one is currently buying this book. There may be 50 vendors that Bookscout are showing us and not a single one of them is buying this book. Uh, so neither my comic shop nor Bookscouter is paying anything. So now let's go over to Comic Blessing and go to again sell.comicblessing.com, enter the ISBN number, hit search, and you can see that we are making an offer on this book of 50 cents. So this is one of those heavily printed editions that uh, is pretty common. You're not getting an offer from anyone else from my comic shop or book scouters, 50 people. The only people buying it are, are, are us. And yes, we're only offering 15 cents uh, because it's really heavily, very common. It's not worth much, but at least you're getting an offer from us. So this is one of those items that might be uh, really good to actually put at your garage sale. Uh, you know, you're only getting 50 cents from us, you're not going to offer from anybody else. Uh, but if you put it out for a dollar or two dollars at your garage sale, maybe someone will buy it just to read. Uh, this could be you know, one of the items that would be kind of good for a local option like that. Now, if you tried to sell this on eBay or Amazon, um, they would eat you alive in fees. Uh, so, yeah, you might be able to sell it there for three bucks, maybe four bucks even. But by the time they take the fees, uh, for Amazon, they're going to pretty much take all the fees. And for eBay, you're not going to be making much after your time and effort. All right, so uh, let's try a different one now. Um, we can try this Fear Itself hardcover. It's a Marvel hardcover. Uh, so we need the ISBN number, which we can get either under the barcode um, or it's also printed above the barcode. And we'll grab that value and let's just go ahead to my, uh, to sell dot comic blessing dot com uh, because we already have it up 
and we can just go ahead and up to the field to re-enter another ISBN. And we want to type it in here. And once we get it in there, we're going to hit continue. And let's see what the offer is. Okay, so here we have another offer from us. Again, uh, this one we're offering $2 for. So good bit more. Let's go over to Book Scouter and try it there. Same ISBN. Here it is, it's the right cover. Uh, we got a couple offers here. Looks like the high offer is $1.27. You can see that most of the vendors aren't really buying it at all, but you do have this one company, Ziffit, uh, who's willing to pay $1.27 for it. And you will have to deal with their minimum, just like, same with us, but at least we're just one vendor, but he, on their on Book Scouter, you've got a list of vendors, but you got one offer for $1.27 from Ziffit. Uh, our offer's better, but... Uh, so let's go over to mycomicshop.com and we'll go ahead and search by the name and put a HC for hardcover. That's how they categorize stuff. And here it is. Click in there, it is the right item. Uh, but they are not currently buying it at all, and there's a pretty long estimate they have before they would maybe need a copy. So you're not going to get anything from them. All right, so we can try the third one. Uh, this Fables graphic novel uh, by DC. It's a DC Vertigo title. So we flip it over. We can get the ISBN. Same place underneath the barcode. It is printed along the edge of the barcode box as well. Um, and this one, we may need to go to the uh, informational page. So let's try my comic shop first. So type in the name, and this is a trade paperback. So we'll put a TPB and hit search. We can find the item. Uh, there's the list of uh, trade paperbacks, and we'll scroll down to this particular volume. And you can see they have uh, different situations for a first print versus a second print. They have two different um, possibilities. So on the book itself, you can find out which printing it is uh, by looking in the uh, publishing page. But you can see in this case, for this volume, they're actually not buying either the first print or the second print. Um, they have a list of, uh, you know, they give you an estimate of how long it'll be. Um, they give you a way notification tip to show you how to determine which volume it is. Or, uh, but they're not buying either one right now. So no offer at all for my comic shop. And we can, we can scroll down, though, and try to find the volume they are buying. Uh, so like here's number 11 reprint they're buying. Just to get an idea of what they might pay when they are buying this item. Um, there's no reason to think it won't be a similar offer. Uh, so that way we can kind of at least get an idea of maybe if we wanted to wait a month, if, uh, you know, it might be worth selling to them or what they might pay. But again, right now, these guys aren't buying it at all. Uh, let's find another volume. We see like volume 15 reprint as well. There's an offer. Um, so maybe that's, you know, maybe that's what we might be able to get for the item when the time comes. scroll down and take a look at some of the other volumes as well. But uh, no offer for my comic shop, so we can move on and maybe try a different site now. Let's go over to Book Scouter and go ahead and enter the ISBN number. And once we get that entered, we're going to hit search. And we'll take a look at what these 50 book buying vendors are offering. So here's the picture. It's the same book. Uh, looks like there's only one vendor even making an offer at all. The rest of them aren't buying it at all. And that best offer is not very much, 15 cents. Um, so probably not a great, or 18 cents, sorry. Probably not a great offer. Uh, you'd definitely be better off selling it at a, your garage sale. Let's go ahead and try Comic Blessing now and take a look at what we're paying. And here's another 50 cent offer from us. So 18 cents via one vendor at Book Scouter, 
nothing currently from my comic shop, but maybe a little more if we wait a month, or uh, an instant offer of 50 cents from Comic Blessing. So again, that might be a good at a garage sale too, but let's go back and try the last one. We got uh, Watchmen graphic novel. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and locate the ISBN number. Uh, this is one of the greatest graphic novels ever made. Uh, it's been a bestseller for since it came out for like 25, 30 years. Uh, there's lots of different printings. Um, you know, we'll grab the ISBN from the back cover and we can go back to Comic Blessing and take a look at what our offer is. So go ahead and enter the ISBN number field and you can see we have a nice tally going of the offers we've made so far. And we'll just enter it here and hit search. And we'll see what the Comic Blessing offer is. So for Watchmen, uh, we're currently offering $5 and change, it's a pretty good offer. Um, kind of uh, more than I would have expected, honestly. I think the Watchmen uh, book has gotten more popular with the release of the HBO series. So it's uh, more people buying it now and it's more valuable. But that's the Comic Blessing offer, which is uh, pretty good. So let's go ahead and see how it compares to uh, these other two sites. So if we go over to Book Scouter, and enter the same ISBN here. And we'll see what they got. So actually, you get a lot of offers here. You can see there's a lot of vendors making offers and that the top offer is actually pretty good. Uh, it's $7.51. So that is a better offer than you're getting on Comic Blessing. That's a really good offer, honestly. Um, I may well sell them this copy of Watchmen uh, after I'm done with this video because that's a really good offer, $7.51. I think if you tried to sell this on Amazon or eBay after fees, you wouldn't be making any more than that. So that's a good offer. So we only have one more place to check now. Um, let's go over to my comic shop. And this one's going to be a little tough to find on my comic shop because of all the different printings they've had over time. and the editions by different publishers. So you can see they have quite a list. You have to kind of scroll through to figure out which one this is. Um, and it, you know, which it looks like the DC publication. Does the cover look the same? Uh, I don't know if that's it. Uh, you can see that it's, you know, a much later printing. This is like a 20th printing or something. So you can see their offer, not as much as either my comic shop or um, not as much as Book Scouter or Comic Blessing. So they're definitely not the place to go. And, and you know, if we take a look at this graphic novel, it's definitely got some handling where, you know, someone read it, enjoyed it. There's, uh, you know, a little bit of bending or creasing. There's a publisher remainder mark on the bottom. Um, it just has general wear. It's not in horrible shape. It's perfectly enjoyable. But this is the kind of thing my comic shop would definitely downgrade to a VG. So they're not even going to give you that fine price that you see as an offer price on a copy like that. They're going to downgrade it to a VG and the offer is going to be even less. Um, but on Book Gouter or on Comic Blessing, you know, same offer for that as for uh, a brand new pristine copy because we understand it's just to be enjoyed. So they're definitely not the best option for this book. You've got uh, this company called Ziffit.com paying $7.51 or you can sell it to us for 536. Now again, flipping back to Book Scouter here, just remember, and you can test this for yourself, that like if I go in there tomorrow and enter the same ISBN, as if it may not, they may not be buying it at all. They may be down here and not buying, or they may have dropped to three dollars like these other sellers. Um, so th these are like you gotta jump on that. Our site's uh, more stable. It could be a while before that changes there. Um, but you know, if you want to sell it to Ziffit, you probably want to get your box ready. Like if you're trying to reach a $20 minimum, you're slowly building a box for them, and it's taking a couple days. When you actually go to submit it, that $7.51 might be off the table. Um, it might be down to three or four bucks. But anyhow, so you can see kind of like there's various places to sell these, whether it's to us, Comic Blessing, or uh, my comic shop, or Book Scouter. 
Um, you're going to get a different results based on the graphic novel, but it can definitely be worth your time to like step through and figure out where you're going to get the best offer. Um, so I did, I did a bunch more, and I just want to run through some more examples. Um, so let me uh, show you some more examples. All right, here's a comparison I did on a bunch of different graphic models. And I show kind of a picture of it at the top, the ISBN number right below it, and then the results from the three sites. So first we had a, just a Batman New 52 trade paperback, pretty common. Uh, if, we if we test that on all three sites, and this was a couple days ago that I've made this comparison, so these offers may have changed since then. But my comic shop, they were buying a first print only. They were paying $2.53. They were not buying the reprint at all. Um, Book Scouter, the best offer from any of those vendors was $1.50, and Comic Blessing, we were paying $2. So we kind of, if you have a first print, maybe my comic shop wins that one. If it's not a first print, we win it. We were offering the same $2 for first print or any of the printings. Next, we have kind of a general Avengers soft cover trade paperback. Pretty common, again, not something that's going to go for a lot of money. Um, my comic shop was paying $1.43 for it. Book Scouter, the best vendor on there was paying 75 cents only, and we would buy it for a dollar. So uh, in that case, my comic shop kind of wins out on the offer. Uh, next we have a Walking Dead, one of the Walking Dead trade paperbacks. They're not the big, not the big thick ones or the omnibuses, just one of the standard trade paperbacks. Uh, I think, it, I don't know which number this was, it was like a 15 or 16 or something. But there's the graphic novel cover, the, the ISBN. Uh, my comic shop was buying the first print for $1.80, um, but they were not buying anything, any other printing, not second printing. When you talk about these, these, my, these Walking Dead graphic novels, the trade paperbacks, they were printed like 15, 20 times. So there's enormous amount of them out there of the later printings. Um, but they're not buying the reprint at all. Now, if you go to Book Scouter, and you enter that uh, ISBN, you get the best offer you get is 15 cents from one of those vendors, or from Comic Blessing, we were paying 50 cents. So again, in this case, uh, maybe uh, maybe the best option is my comic shop, or maybe it's one of the ones you put your garage sale and sell it for a buck, or maybe try to get two bucks for it, you might be able to get it. All right, so next kind of moved into some of the more valuable items, like next we had this big giant size X-Men Omnibus. It's one of the big Marvel thick hardcover books, all color inside. Uh, they're really nice books. I think they retail normally for 89 to 100 bucks in that range. So this book, uh, if you go look at my comic shop, they were buying it for $27 as a fine, assuming it was in good condition, fine condition, um, or they were paying $54 in trading. And this is where, if you are still collecting comic books, or other graphic novels, uh, my comic shop can really pay off sometimes because you get basically double that amount, double their offer amount in trade. And if you want to buy, pick up, you know, you, you can build up credit on their site and you can pick up Golden Age comics, you can pick up Silver Age, Keys, whatever you want. Uh, you can build up a couple hundred dollars worth of trade and you get something really good. So if that's uh, kind of where you're at in your collection, that might be a good option. Now, if you took this book onto Book Scouter and entered it, uh, I got an offer. The best site was offering $46.50, which is a pretty good offer. That's like half half the original cover price, something like that. That's pretty good. In fact, Comic Blessing, our site, we only had an offer of $35 for it. So uh, in this case, Book Scout, if you just want the cash, you don't want trade credit, then Book Scouter, whatever vendor it was, that was the best option uh, for you to get your money. Um, and the nice thing about a really expensive book like that is that that already met their $20, $20 minimum on whatever site it was. So you just could sell them that one book, get your free shipping label, send it off. They're not going to gripe too much about minor imperfections. Again, like if it has some handling wear, my comic shop might downgrade it to a VG. But either Book Scouter or Comic Blessing, our site, um, will, you know, we understand we're fine with some minor wear. Um, now, if you're talking about something that like was a, came from a library and has library stickers on it or the dust jacket's missing or there's tears 
Um, any real major damage like that, I think both Comic Blessing or any of the any of the vendors in Book Scatter might downgrade the price on that. But you know, if he's got it, if it's just got general kind of handling room, that's fine. Uh, then I moved on to like one of these hardcover DC archive books. Um, it was a great series. Uh, and this one was a Sergeant Rock. They, they're color reprints of uh, classic old strips, old comic books. So this one, this one's actually a, an out of print one. It's pretty good. It's rare. It's a it's a good solid uh, collectible item. My comic shop uh, offer in fine condition, which would, you know has to be pretty nice, was seven bucks. Uh, the best offer on Book Scouter from one of those vendors was twenty was uh, sixteen. And then our site, we offer $25 for this. So we're definitely the best option for that. Uh, then I did a couple more just to give you an, an idea. So then we, I looked at, I took one of these uh, Marvel Epic trade paperbacks, kind of the newer line of Marvel um, reprints of older titles. Um, they're really nice, they're color. <laughs> this Wolverine one is, is actually one of the out-of-print ones. It's it's uh, rare and a little more valuable. It's uh, Wolverine Mad Madripoor Knights. Um, so I went to my comic shop and uh, did a search there, and they were offering three dollars and thirty-five cents cash. I went on a Book Scouter. The best offer I got from one of their vendors was eleven dollars and fifty cents, and then our offer on our site is twenty-five. So we're definitely. Uh, it went out there. I think in general, a lot of times we are for the most, when you're talking about an actual out of print rare graphic novel, our offer is usually the best. So, you know, if you're going to have a garage sale and you want to just sell some stuff that way, you should definitely like sweep through your collection, just enter the ISBNs on our site. That way you can tell if you really do have an out of print graphic novel that's worth more, you can sell that one or those two or three to us. And then maybe you have a whole bunch that are off those 50 cents or a dollar and you can sell those at a garage sale pretty easily and get the money that way. Just a suggestion. Um, then I just uh, I did an example of a, a Doctor Who paperback. So this is not a graphic novel, it's not a comic book. Um, it's just a paperback book, a novel, you know, a like small paperback novel. Um, my comic shop was not making any offer on this. Uh, in fact, they didn't even have it in their catalog, so they weren't, wasn't something that they sell or buy on their site. Um, Book Scouter, none of the vendors there made an offer at all. Uh, and then we offer 50 cents for it on our site. So just so, just to throw it out there, we buy any book related to Doctor Who or Star Trek or Star Wars. And a lot of these paperback books are only worth like a dollar on Amazon or eBay. Um, and if you're going to sell them in a garage sale, you probably have to sell them for a quarter anyhow. Uh, but we buy any of those, and then uh, we do buy other books. So the next, next, next in my example is a just a reference book about frogs that I found. Um, just kind of like a cool reference book about frogs. Not a comic book, not a graphic novel, not related to comic books in any way. My comic shop, it's not something they buy or sell on their site, so there's no offer. Uh, I entered into Book Scouter, and lo and behold, they were offering $16.55. I entered the same ISBN on our site, Comic Blessing, and our offer was $7.50. So this is just a cool reference book that actually has some value. And the best place to sell it was to one of the vendors on Book Scouter. But we do make an offer. So like if uh, you're selling a bunch of books either to us or to that or to a vendor off there, it's just good to know that like you can check your textbooks, your recent textbooks, you can check any any book in your house, you can put in there and see. Like, we, we don't make offers on a lot of books that aren't related to comic books or comic history, but it might be worth a check. You never know. And the last one I did for the comparison was one of these Marvel Essentials, um, one of the X-Men titles. This, I think, is volume 10. It is out of print. It is a little more rare and valuable. Um, so I looked on my comic shop. They made an offer of $2.40 cash. Um, Book Scouter had an offer, the highest vendor on theirs, their offer was $11.18. And then our site, Comic Blessing, we offer $20. So again, the more rare, out of print, more valuable ones, we tend to make the best offer on, in my experience. 
so there it is. Uh, those are kind of the options. I would say uh, it is a little bit of work to kind of like go through several different sites and sort stuff out to different vendors, but you definitely will get the most money for your, your books that way, for your graphic novels and some of your other books, potentially. Um, now, hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, last thing I want to do is just kind of run over some information for us. Uh, just a last minute pitch for our site. Again, this is an ad. This is an ad that I'm probably going to be running in the next year's Overstreet annual price guide, like a half page ad. Um, so yes, we buy golden age, silver age, bronze age, even modern age comic books. Um, we pay cash for all that. Um, but we also are the site that will buy reprint trade paperbacks and graphic novels. Um, sell.comicblessing.com just a reminder we buy all graphic novels all trade paperbacks uh, about comics and all books about comics or comic history so we want stuff that's about that reprints golden age stuff reprints silver age stuff reprints bronze age comics or copper age comics we buy books that are about comic book history um, about artists we buy books that are fantasy or sci-fi or art related uh, we definitely, you know, want the DC Showcase Presents trade paperbacks. We want the DC Archive hardcovers. We absolutely trying to make the best offer for Marvel Masterworks hardcovers and trade paperbacks and the Marvel Essentials, the black and white reprint line. And then we're trying to make uh, the best offers on most of the Marvel Epic series that's coming out kind of currently. All of those trade paperbacks. And then we buy all the omnibuses and more. Uh, and... Last thing to remember is we provide instant live online offers. So you can see right there, you just enter the ISBN number like I showed you. You can see right there our offer. Um, you can go to competitor sites that I showed you and see what their offers are. Uh, we'll, we do have a $20 minimum of, of, to sell to us on the site. Um, but once you reach that, you get a free shipping label. Um, you just pack it up. Make sure to package it well. Uh, we'll get it. We, once we receive it, we usually process orders within one or two days of receiving it, and we'll just issue fast payment either to PayPal, if that's what you chose when you submitted the order, or we can send you a check in the normal mail as well. And then finally, we, we buy entire collections. So we'll buy large collections of graphic novels or large collections of comic books and graphic novels or just comic books, even pulp magazines, older pulp magazines and magazines whether they're comic related or sci-fi fantasy. Um, we buy fanzines and stuff, anything related to the comic book industry or its history. We'll buy all of it. If you have a really large collection of any of that, then uh, you know stepping through the site one by one is probably not gonna be a good option. Um, but you can just reach out to us. Let me just get back. So if you go to our website, And you click the sell comics link at the top. It'll bring you to a page that kind of summarizes what we buy. Uh, and then you can enter, you can send us a note. Enter your name, your email, and your zip code so we kind of know where you're located and how hard it would be to get there. And then just a brief summary of what you have and submit. And this will send us an email and we'll reply as soon as possible. And if you have a collection that's really big and you're in another part of the country, um, you know, if it's if, if it's large enough, we don't mind traveling out there, making an offer, and just uh, giving you cash and taking it away. Um, so yeah, again, if you have something that's way too much to just try to enter on the site, or if it includes uh, non-books like comic books or other kinds of related material, memorabilia, send us a note via here, and and we'll we'll let you know what we think. Well, that's what I have for you today. I know it's probably kind of a long video, but I hopefully you, you found it uh, some useful information and you can make more money selling your graphic novel collection or your comic books. Um, if you did find the video useful at all, remember to like it as well as uh, subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll find out when I have new uh, videos for more information. Um, the other thing you can do is add a comment if you have any questions or ideas or suggestions on other ways to make money selling graphic novels or where to buy them. Uh, all ears and I'll respond as quickly as possible. 
And uh, you can also help us out by clicking on either of the two links in the comments below if you're going to shop for stuff on eBay or Amazon, whether it's graphic novels, comic books, or anything else. Uh, if you click one of those links first, you'll get brought to the site. You do your shopping just as normal. You buy whatever you're going to buy. Uh, and then eBay or Amazon will pay me a tiny referral fee for the business. So it won't cost you anything extra. You don't have to buy anything you weren't going to buy anyhow. Uh, just help me in the production of these videos so I can get more out, get you more information as well. And the final way you can help is sell me some graphic novels uh, or comic book collections. So if you go to sell.comicblessing.com, again, and you can just go ahead and put in your graphic novels and sell them, get your free label and ship them. And I did want to give a little bonus to the people who made it all the way through this video. If you are going to go to sell uh, to comicblessing.com and sell your stuff, uh, enter the coupon code YouTube. This will give you an extra 10% on top of any offer we're already making. So YouTube, enter it into the coupon field while you're setting up your sell order. Get an extra 10% for free. Uh, help us out, help you out. Everybody's happy. So anyhow, that's all I have for today. So I will talk to you soon and more stuff to come. Thanks.